you know, leather bound books on the edge. Okay? Um, and, or I could have, you know, my bands instead of, I could have it like this. So I could have this band which I would glue on top of my, um, on top of my end sheet. Right? It would be like this. Okay, so that's it. Is everybody done? Almost? Um, I'm going to um, keep going and show you how to do the uh, end sheets and the gauze, and then I can just help you do yours, okay? So that's a nice, that's a pretty good book. Um, so that's the idea. All your threads are invisible. They're only going up and down this way. Um, and then they're nice and even on the inside. That's like the basic, you know, basic way to do it. Then there's all kinds of patterns that you may have. But um, so for the end sheets, okay. So that's my front page. Um, for the end sheets, what I did was I took slightly heavier paper and a different color too. Okay. So I folded my. Um, and again, if you had something that was printed, or if you had like fancy paper, like this paper, you know, that would make a nice end page, right? Uh, marbleized paper. So let's get rid of that. Um, so the bone again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this, the end sheets about the same size. It doesn't have to be exact because I'm going to trim my book, right? So I'm just going to mark it. And I'm going to cut it. Oh, I should tell you another story, actually. This teacher that I, um, uh, well, I could tell you a lot of stories about him. But anyway, his name is Provinciali. And he's like an historical figure in uh, Italian design, especially 50s and 60s, he designed a lot of magazines and stuff. But after the late 60s, he decided not to have a studio anymore, so he came to teach to my school. And he was a great guy. He was about five feet tall, kind of chubby, and not beautiful, but an amazing guy. And uh, I tell you two stories. Once I came in without the colors, like uh, wash, and he told me, you'll never be a graphic designer if you don't bring your tools. And I was like, OK. And then another time, he, um, I asked him if he would be my thesis advisor. And I wanted to, I was looking for a thesis you know, project. And I thought I would do something about baskets, because in Sardinia, we have beautiful baskets. And his response was, I'm not interested in hay or straw. <laughs> that was like his response. But because I really admired him, is that now. Um, what I did is I went ahead and did something else. I did a book about musical instruments, which you guys saw. And, um, and I copied his design from one of his books. And basically, I just did my book like that. And he, he loved it. He was very flattered that I'd done that. Um, but anyway, the reason I'm talking about him is because he used to talk of a book as like a, as a, um, as a coat, and I think he said it like a man's coat and, and suit, but you know, it probably could be applied to women, where the, uh, where the jacket could be like your overcoat, and then the cover itself is your jacket, and your, um, your end pages are more like your vest, okay? So he always puts some kind of pattern on the end pages to make it look like it's something, okay? And then I guess your pages are then your shirt, and it stopped at that point, but um, but anyway, I just thought it was a beautiful um, image of having a book being, you know, a three-piece suit plus the overcoat. Um, anyways, that's that's probably Charlie. Okay, so the end pages are cut, and I'll show you how to do the um, how to glue them. So what you need is you need scrap paper. Okay, and the way it's done is you only glue a strip of 
of the end sheet, okay, on the side. So where is my glue here? Um, also what I do to make things easier, I just pour some on a, on a piece of paper. That way I don't have to worry about the tube, okay? Um, you're going to need a plastic container to mix your glue to do the actual book cover, but for this, this is good enough. So, so what you do is you put, and also you'll need a body to help you make the cover because you need two people, um, but for this one person is enough. So what you do is you mask uh, the side with the fold. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but it's the side with the fold, and you do about a quarter inch or maybe half inch, okay? So that's all masked, and now with the glue, you just go like that. Okay? So that gives me a nice clean area, a, a nice clean stripe for my end sheet. So then you need an apron because you can do this to really clean quickly. Then you take this and you get rid of it. Uh, you fold it in half, that way the glue stays inside. You move the bottom sheet, you, you get rid of it again by folding it so the glue doesn't mess up anything else. Um, and now I have a clean stripe of glue and I'm going to paste that onto one of my, uh, on the front page, or in this case at the back, okay? So on the spine, right there. That's it. Nothing to it. Believe it or not, this is how every hardbound book you buy, that's how it's made. A machine makes it, but that's, these are the steps, okay? So now I do the other one. If you want to get fancy glue, it's called polyvinyl acetate, PVA, um, you know, pH neutral, whatever. Uh, but it's basically Elmer's glue. It's just fancy. Okay. I just made it up. You know, half an inch, quarter inch, depending on the size of the book. Oh, leave the string out. Yeah, so now I do the other side right here. And now what's beautiful about this is that I can really mess with it because I can, you know, draw on it, I can write a secret message because it's going to get covered, right? This is where the, my... Um, right? This is where my book... Right now what you're looking at right here is, is this page except on the inside. Right? Once I put my cover on top, this is all gonna, gonna disappear. Okay? So that's the best part. Um, okay, so now you'll notice, I don't know if you can tell, but my, um, this edge right here, it's kind of straight, and it's actually almost like concave, which is actually the opposite of what I want. What I want is to be round like this. And if you did like serious book binding, you would take a hammer eventually, and after it's kind of still the glue is a little soft, you would actually round this. Okay, I don't know if you can see it. So the reason for that, the reason for rounding this right here, in other words, to make it look like this, okay, is because then at the opposite end where the book opens, the pages are going to be like this. And what's really nice about that is you can really open the pages easily because the pages are staggered. Okay? So in an old-fashioned book, a really good book, you have that curvature. Um, now this don't. This does a little bit. I don't know if you can tell. Um, actually, this does. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Okay, do you see that curve? All right, so the backing right here, it's nice and round. And there's a way to do that, uh, again, literally by holding the book and like hammering it. Um, you don't see it much in you know, industrially made books. 
Okay, so that's it. So that's now my spine. So now the next step is to, it's really two steps. I'm going to do it all at once. Um, uh, what we need to do now is to put glue on the spine right here. Put a lot of it. Okay? And I'm going to use the, um, the press again. Um, so you, you might do this part at home. I don't know today, but... So you put the book between the two pieces of board, making it stick out a little bit, okay? By that I mean uh, like this, okay? So, because now what we're doing is we're gonna coat it with glue. I mean, if you want, you could do it already if you brought glue. Um, the, the nice thing about pressing it down is that it's going to give it you know, a really nice shape, uh, meaning it's going to keep all the signatures really together. Okay. So now I need more glue. And now, because I pressed it down, you could be really pretty liberal with the glue, meaning you can, you can really um, okay. So you just take your finger and you just go like that. And now that's where you get your thread to kind of just disappear there. Okay. There's no thread. Uh, Okay, so again, you can be messy because it doesn't matter. All right, so you see how it's, it's happening here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you see I'm, I'm making the glue go inside, you know, between the signatures. And also what's nice, it, it will go in our slits. Remember those cuts we made where the thread is? The glue will actually seep in there and uh, make it strong. It's basically plastic, this glue, okay? So it's very flexible, like that. Okay? So what I could do now is I could let it dry and do like another coat in an hour or in half an hour maybe, even like maybe 10 minutes. Um, but there's only so much you can put and after a while it doesn't really do much more. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll let it dry for just a couple of minutes um, and I'll get my next thing ready. Okay. So there it is. There's my nice, um, nice backing. All right, so I'll, I'll put that aside for a second. Uh, it helps also if you have a rag, like a piece of cotton to help yourself, like to clean, like that. My other, another teacher used to say, you know, printers are the messiest people, but somehow they never get their fingerprints on their work, you know? It's like that's something about that. Um, Anyway, I'm just going to get rid of all the junk. And all right. So the next thing we need to do is um, we need to put gauze around the book. Okay, I was trying to see if I could show you. Um, no, this doesn't show. Okay, I'll just take this as uh, Yeah, this doesn't have anything because it's a, it's a soft bound book. Okay, so they, they, they directly glued the cover 
um, right on. But, um, oh, okay. I actually have some. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, yeah. um, so anyway, but let's assume now, I'm not going to take this apart, but let's assume now that's my book, and let's assume that's my, um, my end sheet, right? Okay, so what I need to do, now I've got the glue, I've got the end sheet, so now I'm going to wrap something around this, like this, in order to make it really strong, okay? And the way to do that is with what's called, well, book binding, I don't know, gauze? I think it's called gauze. It's, a, it's like cheesecloth, cloth, but it's already treated with some kind of glue. So what I'm going to do is cut a piece that's going to match my book. Um, a little bit shorter than uh, the book itself, okay? I don't want to go actually all the way to the end, okay? And I want to have enough to go on both sides of the cover, you know, maybe an inch or two inches on both sides. So I'm just going to do that, I cut a piece, and this is the point where you're going to need actually a buddy, like a friend to help you, because things get messy. All right, so um, ideally now I should have waited. I mean, I should wait more until the glue is dry because then it won't, you know, come back out again. Uh, but because we don't have time, I'll just show you. I'll take this apart. So let it dry. You can put it like, a, you know, under like a couple of books, you know, a dictionary or something. Um, so I'm just going to pretend that's dry and I'm, I'm going to pretend it's not going to, you know, it's not going to come back out, right? Um, and with some luck, it actually will stick. Yeah, it's already, it dries pretty fast. Um, so now, actually, I need some, uh, I need some help. Can you, can somebody get a couple of sheets of uh, just plain paper on top of that big pile? Um, newsprint is the best for this, for this stuff. So if you buy yourself like a big pad of newsprint paper, um, yeah, it should be thin. Is it thin? Yeah, there should be some thin paper. Okay, so if you're letting it dry, just, just set it onto something so that it overhangs and it doesn't touch anything, okay? Um, and now I need a container. I don't know. Oh, okay, here we go. So you need a plastic container to pour some glue. And for this step, you could even thin, up, thin the glue a little bit. Um, for the cover, we're going to need big sheets like this. But for this step, I only need um, half. Actually, I, I really just need two, but it's good to have a pile underneath because you never know what might happen. Okay? So, this is the same process we'll be doing when we do the, um, the cover, okay? So, when we do this part, you can't really see, yeah, there you go. When we do this part, we'll be doing this kind of process where you need to put glue down and move really quickly because the paper or the cloth will curl. So uh, that's why you need somebody to help. Um, with this uh, material, it's not a big deal because it won't curl. Uh, so, so now again, you could, you could um, thin this, but I'm not going to do it now. What you do is you just plop it down, just like that, okay? And you're just gonna put glue on top of it with a brush. And for that, you need a cheap, um, like a $1 brush or, well, $2.99. This is already expensive. Um, but like a short, a short um, what is it called, bristle, and about two inches wide. This is two and a half inch, okay? Um, 
you want a cheap one because invariably you'll forget to clean it afterwards and you have to throw it away, so you don't want to throw away a you know, $20 brush. Um, okay, so now I will need a person to help me move the sheet from underneath after I'm done, okay? So why don't you have me? La Valletta. <laughs> we won't say what that is. <laughs> okay. So, um, so once I'm done, you just pull this out, okay? Okay. And let me just prepare something where I can prop my book. Where should I put it? Like in there? Or? Just no, throw it in the trash immediately. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you do it. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I need to thin it, but okay. So there you go. So what you do, again, not so crucial in this one, because this nothing will happen here. But when we do the cover, you, you put a finger in the middle, and you go radially out. You don't go sideways. You really have to go from the middle because what happens is you don't want to get glue underneath. And in this case, of course, the glue is going underneath. But in the case of the cloth, um, you don't want that. Otherwise, your cover is going to be all mucked up. Oh, man. Squeeze some more. Um, Okay, so again, you can be pretty relaxed in this step because this, this stuff just doesn't react. But when you're using paper or book binding cloth, you, you'll be surprised. All kinds of stuff happens. You know, it will curl, it will bend, it will just be, you know. What happens is paper um, doesn't like water, right? So that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to take this up. And Sylvia's gonna get rid of that. And actually, what I need you to do, Sylvia, is to yep. prop, prop the book on top of this book. Now put that book on top of this book, on the edge here, see? Ah, messy. See, so I would already be screwed if this was my cover. Like, totally screwed, look at that. Here, let's put it in the, on the video. Um, very bad. You're not supposed, this part you're not supposed to do with two people. That's, that's just a mess. But again, we don't care for this because it's, it's on the outside. So I want to put the book overhanging like that. That's good. Um, okay, now I got it. Okay, that's it. That's it. And then you just put it on top, just like a nice bandage. Like pretend you're, you know, curing a wound. <laughs> huh. Okay. So now I can. I mean, it doesn't dry immediately, right? That's it. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Um, it doesn't dry immediately, so you can uh, you can kind of fool around with it. And then you just strap it around. Okay. And again, this is so nice about this being, you know, covered completely because I can really, you know, I'm, I'm not worried that my hands are dirty now. Okay. So what that does, it's going to make it really strong now. I mean, typically the part that breaks in a book is the end page. Okay. Because truly that's the real hinge. Well, it's part of the hinge, but the cover too. Um, okay, so that's done. So now after this dries, uh, the next step is to trim the book. So the next step would be to take your measurement, okay, mark it like that, right? And then just take it to the guillotine and just trim it. And um, you don't want to trim this side, of course, but then you've wasted an afternoon. Um, that's it, everyone. So if you guys want to, it's 5 o'clock, if you guys want to stick around, and uh, um, I can help you do this part if you have gotten this, to this part. So, um, so what should I tell you? Yeah, so the next step then is to do the cover, which is a whole separate process, but looks somewhat like this, okay? Uh, but there is a few tricks about how big the chipboard should be 
and how big the paper should be. So if you get the paper uh, to do the cover, you need to get a sheet that's at least like this big. Okay, this would be good. See, because that would be enough. A piece of paper this big would be big enough for, to have both sides. All right? Um, and again, that paper that I recommended, the Murano, is pretty good. Um, I have some book binding cloth that I could, um, you know, it's not precious, so I could let you guys use if you want to use book binding cloth. Uh, book binding cloth is going to be safer because it doesn't seep through as much, um, but paper can be nicer. Um, so now it's going to do all kinds of stuff, like it's, you know, it's curving, it's buckling, uh, but that's okay, we don't care. So that's it. So now we just have to let it sit. And I don't know, I don't have a way to do that, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna prop it between, I'm gonna try to prop it between my books here. There you go, that's a good way. Okay, uh, all right, that's it. <laughs> Man, that was hard. <laughs> and it's not even finished. <laughs> um, okay, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll set up another day to do the, um, the cover, okay? But you need to be, to come prepared, like with all your parts, your, um, you know, your paper, your chipboard, and we, you know, and then we'll cut it and we'll do it, okay? And then you can, we'll put the glue and then you can just take it home and put it under a stack of books. All right? Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Hooray! All right. Thanks for all the stories. Okay.